If you hunt enough, you learn the truth. What you seek speaks a language and knows it well. That's why every Primo's call for everything you hunt is made the right way. We sweat every detail so you get more out of every hunt and nothing leaves our hand until we know it'll work in yours. Because we don't just make the world's best calls, we speak the language. Primo's. Fishing like a local isn't just about catching fish. It's about connecting with the environment and the people who call it home. It's about hearing the stories and traditions that have been passed down for generations and sharing unforgettable moments with the people you meet along the way. Fishing like a local is having an experience that stays with you forever. And with Fishing Booker, you can experience it too, no matter where you are. Discover your next adventure on Fishing Booker. Welcome to the Casting Across Fly Fishing Podcast. I'm Matthew of castingacross.com, where I explore the quarry and culture of fly fishing. This is the 265th episode of the podcast, and today we're talking about giving gifts and giving ideas for gifts that you want to receive. Now, this is being recorded in early December, and that is a really obvious time for talking about this, but this is a podcast that will be valuable to you regardless of when you're listening throughout the year. We have birthdays, we have graduations, we have Mother's Days and Father's Days, we have retirements, we have uh, just because kind of reasons throughout the year to give gifts. But more importantly, the the aspect of this podcast and this list of, of gifts it is things that you can give to anyone who fly fishes. Someone who has been fly fishing for a month, someone who's been fly fishing for 50 years, somebody who fishes in the saltwater, somebody who fishes in the freshwater, uh, somebody who has everything they could ever imagine, somebody who's just getting started, somebody who is on a really tight budget and would benefit from a gift, somebody who has all the money that they could ever want or need and could buy anything that they wanted. All of the things I go through today are the kind of things that would still be a good gift. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but by and large would still be a good gift to give everyone. And the reason for this and, and, and why I think this matters, and, and this is something that I wrote about earlier this week, but I know not everybody who listens to the podcast reads the articles and vice versa. So I, I do want to kind of retread some of this in a, maybe a different way. Is that it's there's three ways to shop for fly fishers. There's three ways. One is uh, you just take a flyer on on something. You go into a fly shop and say, uh, "Can you help me? This is how this person fishes." I think, um, and then you you maybe get them something that they'll use a bunch of flies that are, they may or may not use. I mean, if they tie flies and get some materials, but that's not super glamorous. I mean, you can you can maybe get a rod, but do you, is that the rod they necessarily want, they necessarily need? So that's, that's one kind of area you can you can shop. You can just kind of take a stab at it, all right? You can hop on Amazon, just put fly fishing in. The first thing that pops up, you uh, you buy that and wrap it up, all right? Uh, secondly, you can just get a wish list, which, I mean, there's value to that. If they need a new pair of wading boots, perfect. If they need a new uh, spool of line, great. Uh, if they have a particular tool or gadget or pack or bag or piece of clothing they want, then they can tell you exactly which model, exactly which size, exactly which color, and maybe even who is running a promotion this time of year so that they get an extra sticker with it. Okay. That's the second way to do shopping. Now, that's good. That's helpful, particularly if you're trying to help somebody out in the sense that you, you want to give them something they're actually going to use. There's nothing wrong with that. But I know for me, that's not necessarily how I like to do my gift giving. And it's I, I although I used to receive gifts that way, I have kind of gone away from that also. Um, not not just because I can kind of you know get what I what I need when I when I need it, but uh, I, I want people to be able to have the joy of doing some shopping and considering what might be best for me. So today's talking kind of about that third way, the third way that you can shop for someone, uh, a third kind of category of gifts, and these are gifts that, like I said, they can be used for anyone for any time uh, with with very few exceptions. So I'm going to run through a handful of them and uh, and and kind of give you the reasons why. So I'm going to start with my absolute favorite gift to give a fly fisher, and that is the gift of time. Now, how do you do this? Uh, now, this might not be the most glamorous thing to unwrap, but I've mentioned this countless times and people have said that they've absolutely enjoyed doing this for people. It's you give someone a day. 
You say, you take a day off work, uh, I'm going to take care of taking you fishing. Um, you might not even be an angler, but you, you might just say, hey, I, I want to finance your day on the water. So you pick a place you want to go, you pick a hotel you want to go to, you pick, you know, depending on what your budget is, you pick a guide, you pick a lodge, and go do that. And that is a wonderful gift to give someone. And for the person who has everything, this is the kind of thing where it, it opens up an opportunity. It takes away one variable. If that variable is money, then it takes that variable away. If that variable is feeling like they need to be around. So if this is a gift you can get your spouse. If they, you know, if they're feeling like they need to, you know, do lots of things, take care of lots of house projects. And, you know, this is something you've been having conversations about or, or, you know, they've been, you know, you want them to be around because you have a new, new family or because your family is in a really busy season of life. If you give your spouse that gift of, Hey, take one night, take one weekend. Uh, this is your gift. Um, you're taking that variable out of somebody who, who might be worried about that. So you take, could be taking out the variable of, of time by giving them quote unquote permission. And I, there's, you know, I use that term loosely. And secondly, you could be taking the variable of money out by saying, I'm going to finance the thing. Uh, thirdly, you could be taking out the variable of planning. If someone who really wants to go fishing, they just don't even know where to start. And you've been doing it for a while and you know, a, a guide that would be a great person to, to work with your, your friend or your family member, your loved one, whoever it might be, or you know a lodge that you had a good experience at, or you even just know a river and, and an itinerary that you can give that person. You write it down, you print off some pictures, you buy a couple of flies, you throw it on the envelope, you put it under the tree, you give it to them, and that is a wonderful gift to give someone. It is, uh, like I said, it's the gift of an experience, a gift of time, maybe a gift of money, maybe a gift of planning. But ultimately, this is one of the best gifts that, in my opinion, you can give someone who is a fly fisher. And of course, this this is the kind of thing you can do for all sorts of things. You can, if, you're, if your spouse is into, you know, uh, sewing, you can do something very, very similar. If your, your kid is into uh, uh, the museum, exact same thing. Um, so these are great, ex great things to give people that aren't actually things because, um, as we know, experiences oftentimes trump things. The second gift is like a totally stereotypical Christmas gift, and that gift is socks and underwear. Socks and underwear. All right. Now, this is one of, again, it, it's a joke. It's a punchline. I love that meme of uh, um, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man where his mask is all torn up and he's looking kind of scared, and the text says something to the effect of uh, my underwear on December 24th. Um, and, and, but socks and underwear matter you need them, right? And you need them when you go outdoors. And I am a big believer um, in having quality socks for comfort, for cushion, for moisture control, uh, and, and even for abrasion resistance. No one wants a blister. And so to get a good quality pair of socks is very helpful. You, you shouldn't be fishing in, in your uh, white uh, calf tube socks, right? I mean, you could do it, but it's not going to be the best thing for you. And you probably don't want to go to the uh, the outdoor store, the big box outdoor store, and just g grab that super puffy pair of socks that's mostly made out of nylon anyway. That's also not going to be good. Um, so there's your socks, then your underwear is the same thing. You want to cut down on chafing. You want to cut down on being hot. You also don't want something that is going to bunch up. And so it's good to have a good pair of underwear. And the same is true for men. The same is true for women for, of course, all different reasons. And, uh, it's not a fly fishing company, but it, it the thing that I always steer people towards is Duluth trading company. Uh, this is just going to be a wonderful place for you to go and you can lay down 20 bucks, you can lay down $200 on buying this kind of stuff. And if anyone who, who you're giving gifts to knows what, what the quality of these things, they're not going to be like, oh, wow, you got me two pairs of underwear for Christmas. You know, thanks. Now, again, you have to the, kind of the right kind of relationship with somebody to buy underwear, but to buy socks. I mean, a good pair of, of their midweight socks, I will use those three and a half seasons uh, out of the year. Uh, I will wear them to work. I will wear them on the water. I will wear them hiking. I will wear them duck hunting. Um, I will wear them around the house and they are bulletproof. Do they cost 25 bucks? Yes, but I go through an entire pack of running socks that cost 25 or 30 bucks in, in a season. Uh, and that's like six pairs of socks. So it all kind of balances out. And again, this is a gift. Uh, you, you have a budget to work with, but at the same time, if that's not your, your your primary concern, you'd rather spend maybe 50 bucks on socks than 50 bucks on a fly fishing gadget they may or may not use than Duluth Trading Company. I know there's lots of other options out there. I mean, I, I do use some of the Bass Pro and Cabela's store brand stuff. 
Um, there are some fly fishing companies. I know that I've used Sim stuff and Orvis stuff in the past, but uh, if I were to just send people in one direction, it would absolutely be Duluth Trading Company because if you're going to buy socks and underwear for daily use, but also could be used on the water, whether it be on that week long trip, um, you know, something that you can wear and rinse in the stream and hang up overnight and you're going to be able to use again in the morning, you know, if that's your bag, then, uh, then Duluth Trading Company is definitely where it's at. So now I wanted to rattle off five gift ideas that I, I just wrote about, and I'm going to give a little bit of an explanation of what they are, because these are things that, well, these are all companies that have been around for a while. And so I anticipate if you're listening to this years from now, then uh, these are all going to be viable options for you. The first one is a personalized piece of gear from the company Vitavu. So Vitavu is a pack and bag company in Lemonster, Massachusetts, about an hour northwest of Boston. They hand make all of their gear out of different uh, nylons um, for uh, like sling packs, for accessories, for backpacks, super bulletproof stuff uh, by, made by good people, handmade to order. And that's good on its own. But what they will do for you, if you have a special patch or the person that you are um, buying for is a special patch, so say they were a scout and they've got patches from that, say they were in the military and they have a patch from that that is appropriate to use outside of a military uh, setting, or maybe they're part of some sort of club, maybe they have a giant patch from the back, from the back of a jacket from when they used to be in a motorcycle gang, I don't know, whatever it may be, um, just something special for Something that even, you know, a Grateful Dead patch or, a, you know, just whatever, a fly fishing club patch, whatever it may be. You send that patch to Vitavu and for five bucks, they will find the thread that matches. They will find that they will talk to you about the placement of that and they can put it on something as small as a as a like leader wallet or a fly wallet for like 25 bucks or as big as one of their premier backpacks with all the bells and whistles, everything that you could ever want out of the best, you know, materials out there for almost 500 bucks. But in between there, there's countless different options that you can, that you can choose. So if your, you know, husband, your wife, your, your grandpa has a patch that's been sitting on the, on the dresser and you say, Hey, could I do something special uh, for you with that? And, and they're okay with it. You can send that off to Vitavu, tell them what you want it on, tell them what colors you want them to use. They will stitch that on there. And now they have something they can wear on the water or they can carry around that they can have at their fly tying uh, desk that has that patch on it. I think it's a really cool thing and a way to really personalize that. There's a bunch of other ways you can personalize their gear too, but uh, that's the one thing I wanted to point out. Another one that I think is a, a great option for somebody who 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 likes to maybe have a little bit of bourbon uh, on the water or even just uh, in general is a flask from Whiskey Leatherworks. So uh, Whiskey Leatherworks is a company. They have actually a location in Montana and a location in Maine. I met them uh through casting across uh, when they were out in Montana. And now they're like 45 minutes away from me. Uh, I live in New Hampshire. They're in Maine. But they have flasks that are just nice. They have stainless and a kind of a copper plated color. Um, but they wrap it in leather. This is all done by hand and then stamped with a trout design. So it's called, I think, the, the Bricky flask. And it's two fish kind of top down, kind of swirling around each other. Um, and the, there's four colors of leather you can choose from. You can either has, have normal sinew stitching or they will use recycled, upcycled is I think what they call it, fly line for the stitching. Um, and then it can be personalized. So that will run between 65 and 100 bucks. And it's a cool thing whether someone carries it in their chest pocket when they're on the water or out on the town or it's just sits in their desk looking cool. It's a nice thing that again, you know, if somebody doesn't have something like that, it's unique and cool. If they have something like that, this is a way to expand it and, and give them something different. So Whiskey Leatherworks uh, flasks, they also have just an awesome assortment of accessories, everything from like little key fobs that ha are made out of just super high quality leather with, um, you, know, tr you know, trout patterns on it or just straight up leather all the way to belts, um, dog accessories, all sorts of stuff. Again, handmade in the United States incredibly high quality stuff. One quick story about Whiskey Leatherworks. They had, I think, a clasp or a buckle, some little part of what they put together that they had to buy because they're in the leather business, not in the metal business, that wasn't working well. And they reached out to everyone saying, hey, please let us know if you have one of these. We want to make it right. That is what I'm talking about. That's the right kind of business ethic and the right kind of people that you want to be uh, spending your hard earned money on. That's the difference between somebody like that and buying something off of a faceless, nameless uh, website and uh, having, maybe having it quicker, maybe having it for like 10 or 15 bucks less, uh, but you're not going to get that kind of customer service. So uh, Whiskey Leatherworks. And, and by the way, these specific items, uh, you can find these, uh, and I'll put a link to them on this 
podcast show notes at castingacross.com so you can click on those on those links. Uh, the third one that I, I wanted to mention is an app that's been out for I think a year and a half or two years now. I could be totally wrong on that, but it's called Trout Routes. So if you like to use maps or if the person that you're shopping for likes to use maps they like to check stream flow data they like to explore for new water if they like to make little notes uh, about when they caught fish where they caught fish if they like to do that using technology uh, then trout routes is uh, the app to use and for 60 bucks a year you get access to not just one state uh, there's an awesome hunting app that you buy one state this is the entire united states and um, they're they're expanding outward i hear uh, for less than 60 bucks. So when you can use all sorts of layers, all sorts of tools, you can zoom in, you can find access points. One of the coolest things I think is that as you're searching, they have integrated Google Maps so that when you t you can tap on um, bridges and see what the access looks like. So if you're a wading angler or a, a boating angler, you know if you can get in or not, or if it's just simply there's a bridge there. Um, there's so many tools, and it is not. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when I uh, when I gave uh, Trout Route Test that week's recommendation. It's not a social media app. They're not going to post where you're fishing. Uh, you're you're not giving them data other than what you're using, uh, so that they can keep track of kind of the, the features that people are taking advantage of. So, Trout Routes, great app, and again, doesn't take up any space. You're not giving some somebody something big. And honestly, I go through seasons of using it where I remember that oh, I have this, and I go through and I use it quite a bit and then I'm fishing and I'm, I'm not using it because I'm kind of in a groove and uh, then I go back to using it again so but it's it's an icon on my phone it's an icon on my favorites list on my desktop and it's right there and every time I use it I find first of all they're making tweaks and, and adding things to it so this is not some sort of static platform or app but uh, it's an absolutely great resource so trout routes um, an inexpensive uh, gift for the person that has everything the next one and this is one I've been recommending these for it feels like the beginning of casting across and it's Karen Talbot art. So Karen Talbot, a uh, wonderful artist uh, up in Maine also. And she is the woman behind the angler's pint. You've inevitably see this uh, Orvis has been carrying it for probably like three or four years, but they've been around for much longer than that. But her beautiful, like um, science textbook quality artwork uh, on these pint glasses that are huge pint glasses. And so if you, uh, you know, you're pouring your 16 ounce can into a normal glass, you got to get really cute towards the end uh, so that you don't spill. And then you're going to have to walk carrying this thing with it, like, you know, bubbling over the, the brim, the meniscus, if you will. Um, having the angler's pint, you don't have to be that careful about it. Uh, but not only pint glasses, but there's wine glasses, both stemmed and unstemmed, as well as I'm sure there's a better word for unstemmed than then you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, and then rocks glasses, a couple different options, and you can get one little rocks glass for six bucks with a fish on it. And you can get an entire set of uh, wine glasses with fish on for one twenty-five, and everything in between. And this is the gift that I like because it's one of the deals where if somebody says, "Oh, thank you very much for that gift. I really like it. I use it all the time. It's pretty. I put it up in my bar. I put it up in my kitchen. I put it up in my fly tying stuff." Now you know. If you want to spend 25 bucks next year, you can get them another fish. Get them the brown, the rainbow, the brookie. There's like three or four different brook trout. I personally have uh, two of a brook trout uh, uh, pint glasses. It's just wonderful, beautiful, useful gifts that, again, if, if somebody has everything, unless they have all of these, which I doubt they do, then you're going to be able to find a way to give them a trout or a saltwater fish or a fly, or you know, if they have the pint, you can give them the rocks glass. There's all sorts of things you can do for for somebody uh, using these these glasses. And uh, the last one that was in this in this article, and there's going to be a, a couple more things I add here on the end, is from Sunfish Woodworks. So uh, Sunfish Woodworks is a wood shop out of Michigan, I believe. I I, I don't know why I didn't check before I, I said that, but um, he does hand carved signs. He does single sided signs, something you put on a wall. He does double sided signs, something you'd hang from a sign. Um, and he puts them, he gives them to people to use in their man cave. He uses them for fly shops, for, for their sign, people to put at their cabin, people, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, there's some that are a little bit uh, more uh, realistic. They're, they're like replica mounts. And there's some that are a little bit more uh, artistic, that are a little bit, the, 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 a flair of kind of his style. And you can you can get those thousands of dollars because you can get them enormous 
versions of them. But for 125 bucks, you can get a cast fish. So he did a, a carving and then he made a cast and then he pours into that cast I'm, I'm, with a couple of materials and then he will hand paint that casting. So it's still a hand painted fish that has a bit of that wood carved aesthetic, but it's not going to be as expensive as a custom carved fish. Now, if you want that, you can get that for a few hundred bucks more, but this is a great way to add something to a room and they're not huge. They're not gaudy. They, they're, they would blend in well with any sort of, you know, subtle, uh, aesthetic of, of a room. Um, the, the brook trout is absolutely beautiful. You can get big old sunfish. You can get like a three, almost three foot long, uh, musky. And, uh, for, for somebody who has a, a space like that, where that could be integrated, that's a great way to add something that is well done. It's not necessarily, you know, the kind of thing you'd find like Marshall's or home goods. This is a little bit, uh, nicer than that. It's actually a lot bit nicer than that without breaking the bank for a custom carved uh, piece of artwork. So, um, the sunfish woodworks does really good stuff and, uh, their cast fish are very cool. So I would definitely check them out. Okay, I'm going to do like a rapid fire last few minutes of other gift ideas that I think you could give uh, segments of people that would absolutely be received well. Uh, the first one is for somebody who isn't fly fishing yet, but you want them to start out. I would recommend going to Reddington's website and checking out all of the different pre-assembled combos that they have. They have them starting well under $100 and then going up over, you know, two and $300. So depending on what your budget is, you can get someone a, a rod and reel and line and leader and backing pre-assembled with a case, sometimes even with a couple other accessories. And it's going to be a quality combo that they're going to be able to use to learn, but also use for a while. And if you jump up to their field kits, I mean, that that's gear. I'll use that stuff. It's, it's really uh, well made and it's it's well assembled so you don't have to do a lot of work to try to figure out what needs to go with uh, you know part a part b part c for somebody who has already started fly fishing but is kind of still dipping their toes into the water and learning about stuff i still think that giving a subscription to a company like postfly is a great way to help somebody get ingratiated into the world to have a monthly box that they get that has some flies they learn a little about the flies it has some other tools and gadgets and little things that we take for granted for having you know a backlog of in our in our our gearbox uh, they're going to get things for the first time especially if they don't necessarily have a fly shop close to them or maybe they're a kid and they're not going to necessarily have somebody that's going to take them to the fly shop all the time getting this box a little bit of information that comes with it it is well curated um, people complain about the quality of the flies but let's hope these that, that someone getting these are going to be using these flies to death and catching fish on them and it's not going to matter uh, the quality of the flies. And to be honest with you, uh, I've, I've had really high quality flies from companies like Postfly and some that are, that are not perfect, but the same can be said from fly shops where I know they have local tires doing them. So this is not a judgment in any way, shape or form. It's just, I would say people make a lot bigger deal about this than they should. So that's a great option, a subscription to a company like Postfly with, for somebody who has started fishing and they're wanting to learn a little bit more, wanting to accumulate some gear. This is a great way to give them something that's going to go for a couple of months or even an entire year. The last one I would say is get somebody a book. You know, even if they are not an avid reader, you can get a book that is beautiful to display. It's worth thumbing through uh, every once in a while. And the first two that come to the top of my head are books by the late Robert, Dr. Uh, Robert Benke. Um, and he has, he has one about trout and salmon in North America. Uh, and then one uh, that is a, a compendium of all of his work from uh, Trout Magazine. And they're beautifully illustrated and uh, both and, and educational as well and and fun well written it's not not dry at all but there's a few dozen maybe almost you know 50 or 60 books uh over at casting across on the fly fishing books page i i try to add every book i talk about or review on the website uh to this list of books and so you can scroll through there and find something that might be beneficial to someone but um even if they just have it sitting on their bookshelf to look pretty i mean that's that's something good, you know, um, if they read even better. Uh, but that runs through a list of gift ideas that again, hope there, there are, were some that were a little bit more specific in there, but then there's some that are very general. So we talked about, uh, uh giving someone time uh, by, by giving them a, a trip, we talked about socks and underwear, we talked about the five gifts in the article, uh, the, 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 the patch gear from, uh, Vita Vu, the flask from whiskey leatherworks, uh, the app from trout routes, the glasses from Karen Talbot art, the carved, uh, cast fish from sunfish woodworks. And then, uh, quickly there was 
was the rod and reel combos from Reddington for the angler that you want to introduce to the sport, a subscription to a company like Postfly for somebody who has just started and probably doesn't have a whole lot of gear. And then number 10 uh, is a book. And uh, I, I threw out those from Dr. Banky, but of course, there's countless others that can be seen over at castingross.com. Is there a gift like this that you think I should talk about in a, co in a coming episode? I have no problem talking about gifts in January. You know, that's people still buy things in January. Uh, let me know, Matthew at castingacross.com. would love to have your ideas, add them to my knowledge base and then share them with the, the greater audience. I think that would be spectacular. This week on castingacross.com, the first article is actually what we just talked about. It was uh, the five fly fishing gifts for any angler. So you can go to the website, put that in, and you will find the five things that I just mentioned in the middle of the podcast with some pictures, some links, uh, some price points, and a little bit uh, uh, of detail. I, of course, went much in greater detail in the podcast than I did there. The other article was called Better Gear or Fly Fishing Flattery, and flattery is in scare quotes. So I don't want to go into too much detail on the podcast because I'm already almost at 25 minutes, but uh, every once in a while in the fly fishing world, people rip off other people's ideas. And sometimes the, it, it's understandable in the sense that there's only so many ways you can make X in fly fishing, right? Whether it be rods, reels, flies, uh, lines, um, you know, what, whatever it may be. Um, if, if someone develops a coating that makes their fly line faster, other companies are inevitably going to say, we need to find a coating that makes our lines faster. And you're not going to say that, uh, you know, that this brand ripped off that brand, especially when most of the brands are coming from the same factory anyway. Um, and and you're, you're not going to tell uh, people to say, well, this company made a nine and a half foot five weight. So you can't make a nine and a half foot five but you can only stick to nine or, or, or 10, right? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about something that looks almost identical and no credit is given. That's an issue. It happens every once in a while. It happens in every industry, but the problem with fly fishing in particular, in my opinion, is it's such a small little cluster of people, a small little industry. You're never going to go unnoticed, right? And people balk and they freak out when somebody from overseas does it. Why is it something that here in the, in the States, uh, domestically, people try to slide by with it? Uh, it needs to be called out. And so this is me calling out the most recent and egregious example that I saw. And it wasn't big. It was for a small product, a less than $50 product. Um, so I, I vent a little bit about that because it's just, it's not necessary. Um, have some integrity. And you know what? Here's the other thing I want to make abundantly clear. If you do this, if you're a business owner, whether you're in fly fishing or not, and you do this kind of thing, then just own up to it apologize and move on. I think everyone's big enough to be able to accommodate that. I would hope so, right? Anyway, better gear or fly fishing flattery. This week's recommendation on the podcast is to put a fly fishing show on the calendar. If you know me, you know Casting Across, you know I think that fly fishing expos are a lot of fun and incredibly useful, whether you're just starting to go fishing, whether you have a big shopping list, or whether you've been doing this for ages, and if you're in the industry itself. Uh, so I have a local stop of the fly fishing show here, uh, just uh, now across state lines in Massachusetts. There is a New Hampshire Trout Unlimited show that happens uh, about uh, half an hour away from me. Uh, and then I generally travel down to New Jersey every year as well for the big fly fishing show. And um, one of these years, I'm going to be in Virginia when uh, Mr. Bo Beasley's uh, Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival happens um, outside of Richmond. But uh, unless I'm already there, I'm unfortunately not going to go. I'm usually there like the week before or the week after. Uh, but I've known Bo for a long time and attended one of those shows, um, goodness gracious, over 20 years ago, back before it was the, the grand thing that it is now. So I'd, I'd love to get down to that. But uh, they're all over the place. So my suggestion is now that we're in December, and usually these things are January, February, March events, put it in your calendar now. Uh, don't get stuck doing yard work that day. Don't get stuck doing something much less exciting that you could be doing the weekend before or the weekend after, but you push it off. And now the day of the fly fishing show is the only day that you can go. And uh, I'll notably talk about fly fishing shows more as, as the season goes on. But my recommendation now is get it on that calendar. Thanks for listening to the Casting Across Fly Fishing Podcast. Please subscribe to your favorite podcast app and rate the podcast on iTunes. Then head over to castingacross.com for three posts a week on the people, places, and things that go into the pursuit of fish.
A life that has the stories to back it. A life to be proud of. It's a Winchester life. Yeah, baby. 6 8 Western. Oh, I'm the old there, baby, right there. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Waypoint TV.